Hi, this is Dr. Rusho with what I think is a very important update regarding diets and children. And I'd like to cover with you the results of a systematic review, and I'll read the title and put the abstract up here on the screen. Are children with chronic illness requiring dietary therapy at risk for eating disorder, um, uh, disordered eating or eating disorders, a systematic review? And remember, a, a systematic review will look at, um, uh, tr uh, attempt to look at all of the available evidence and give us a summary of what the data shows. And essentially what this study concluded was, well, I'll, I'll read it to you here. Um, Diet-treated chronic illness was associated with disordered eating and eating disorder. Uh, that's just part of their conclusion. So essentially what they found was when, when children have chronic illness that requires dietary therapy or dietary management, they are at a higher risk for eating disorders. Now, there's a tough balance to be struck here. On the one hand, of course, we want to help a child feel better. Absolutely. On the other hand, we want to be careful not to... Uh, you know, uh, coerce them, if you will, in, in, into or, or inadvertently lead them into an, an eating disorder. And so I don't proclaim to have the answer to this, but I will tell you what I do, and, and I, I do have a, a strong sneaking suspicion that this is, is helpful and probably the most healthful way to approach this. We make dietary recommendations with children in our practice, but we absolutely avoid anything that would even approach using the technique of fear, and we do not give them strict guidelines, and we try to make the diet something that we recommend that they do, but to put it simply, we don't try to make it a big deal, because children have fragile uh, uh, psyches, um, and we, we want to do everything we can not to expose them to fear around food, because there is the, the chance that they will bring that forward with them for the rest of their lives. So, we can use diet, we can make dietary recommendations, um, but using fear and, and, and recommending diets that are overly strict, in my opinion, A, lead to poor compliance, because kids will say, screw it, I don't, I don't wanna do it, or B, it may lead them the other way to be overly neurotic about food and lead to an eating disorder. So similar to what I recommend with adults, not to be uh, hard-lined and, and give these very rigid mandates, we want to use that same approach with children, at, at least uh, as, as best as I could recommend. I don't know that we have any data that definitively answers this question. But we want to be careful not to tell a child, for example, oh, you have Hashimoto's, you can never have gluten again, or it's going to flare your antibodies. You know, that discussion is damaging to adults. I would say it's even more damaging to children. And so we can, we can leave the, the fear-mongering out of the conversation, and we can use language perhaps more so of, well, you know, generally avoiding grains may help you feel better and may be better for your, for your thyroid, but if every once in a while there's a birthday party or, or what have you and you want to partake, that's okay. Just as long, just be mindful of how you feel. And if you notice you feel really poorly when you're eating certain foods, then you may want to avoid those more so in the future. I think that is a very reasonable dialogue to have with the child. Uh, not to make them afraid that they're going to be fueling an autoimmune condition or fueling an inflammatory process, um, which is probably well-intentioned underneath the surface. But if we don't identify and recognize the fact that that actually may be psychologically damaging to the child, then we're probably doing more damage than we are good. So something I think for all parents, healthcare practitioners to keep in mind is that yes, we want to help children become more healthy by using diet, but we want to strike a very careful and cautious balance, not to be overzealous and to tip them into uh, a, a eating disorder, which unfortunately is, is starting to be documented. So just food for thought, and I'm, I'm more than uh, welcome comments that people may have who are working with children and who have found techniques to be helpful, and, and feel free to post those uh, below here. Okay, this is Dr. Ruscio, and hopefully this helps you get healthy and get back to your life. Thanks.